Hey boys and girls. Today we are starting to do some work with mixed numbers. Um, we are going to talk about area like we uh, started last week. We know area is length times width. And we are going to do that this time though with mixed numbers. Remember a mixed number is an example is one and three fourths, whole number and a fraction. So we know it's more than one, okay? So this kind of model um, is a little bit different how we do it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So Mrs. Cruz wants to use square tiles. So you see them here and they're better in your book, a little bit darker, to cover the front entryway of a house. Each tile she plans to use measures a half a foot by a half a foot. What is the area of the entryway? So we're gonna draw a model to show how many tiles she's going to use. So if we look here, we know that the length, how long is it, is three and a half, and her width is four and a half. So this is very important. A lot of times when we're talking about area, just like here in the, on our floor in the school, like we've talked about, they're square foot tiles, meaning one foot by one foot, one foot length, one foot width. But in this case, they're a half a foot by half a foot. So it's gonna be a little bit different to know how many tiles she's going to use. We can't just, you know, draw out whole ones. Each one is a half a foot by a half a foot. So one thing, that we need to understand is one half times one half is a fourth. So each tile is actually gonna be a fourth of a foot. So to represent it, we, are, we do have the same denominator with our three and a half and our four and a half over here. So as we are drawing it, I know my length is three and a half, but I know that each little square each little line on here is a half of a foot so i can just start drawing anywhere so this is a half and a half would be a hole a half a half would be another hole that's two a half and a half is another hole three and a half so i'm going to write three and a half right here so i understand what that represents because each tile is a half a foot by a half so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know that'd be seven halves. Okay, to do my width, that's four and a half. So half and a half is one, half and a half is two, half and a half is three, half and a half is four, and a half. So I'm gonna write that right here. I'll go ahead and fill in my whole uh, rectangle. So it says, draw the model to show how many tiles she will use. So now all we have to do is figure out how many tiles are in here. What was important was that we represented them the correct way by what it told us, half by half. So now, if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I know seven times nine is 63. There are 63 tiles in here because this is seven halves and we know this would be two times four is eight plus one is nine halves. Nine halves times seven halves is 63 fourths. And the reason it's fourths is because we knew a half times a half is a fourth. So we know every little square represents fourths. Okay. All right. Let's turn to the next page and try another one. That was page 217. Let's turn to page 218. Wheel replaces the tiles of a shower floor. The floor measures four and one third feet by three and two thirds feet. Wheel covers the floor with small square tiles like we see here and you see in your book. Each tile he uses is a third by a third foot. These are a little different. Our last one was half by half. This is one third 
by one third. So each little square tile is actually one ninth. So that's important for us to understand. And as we look at what it's telling us, it says use the grid to represent this. Each square is one tile. Each square would be one ninth tile. All right, so A says, how many tiles cover the shower floor? How can you find the number without counting them? Okay, so let's first represent our length and width. All right, we know it's um, four and one third length. So remember, each one is a third. So it's gonna take three to make a hole, right? One third, two thirds, three thirds. So that's one, two, three, four, and a third. I'm gonna write that right here. Three times four is 12 plus one is 13 thirds. It took 13 little tops of these squares to be four and a third, because one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, 10 thirds, 11, 12, 13 thirds. Because I know each side is one third. Three and two thirds. So it's gonna be one, two, three for one hole. One, two, three, two, three, and one, two thirds. Three and two thirds. Three times three is nine, 10, 11 thirds. Remember, it told us each side was a third. That's why we're counting by thirds here. One third, two, three thirds. That's a whole. One, two, three. That's two holes. Three holes and then two thirds. So we can go ahead and close it all in. And that's going to be what our shower floor looks like. How many tiles cover it? How could we find them without counting each individual one? Well, we knew it took 13, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Length and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 thirds. So now we just need to multiply 13 times 11. I'll just stick that over here. One times three, three. One times one, one. One times three is three. One times one is one. 143. And three times three is nine. You could count all of these, but just like we did on the last paper, we knew nine times seven was 63. 13 times 11 is 143. Remember, these are ninths because a third times a third is a ninth. So 143, we multiply 13 times 11. What is the area of each tile? One little tile, its area, length times width is one ninth. How can you use the area of each tile to find the shower floor? Well, you find the area of one and multiply it by how many you have and it is 143 ninths, just like we figured out. Okay, let's look at one more page, 219. What is the area of this map? How can you rewrite each mixed number as the sum of a whole number and a fraction? All right. All right, so we can break that apart. A whole number and a fraction, all that's saying is, how can we break those apart? Just like if this was 25, we'd say it's 20 plus five. Two and a half, we're saying that's two plus a half. One and seven eighths, that's one plus seven eighths. So we're gonna draw an area model, kind of like we do when we're doing the box method with multiplying, that some of y'all like to do. Um, we're going to do that same thing here. It doesn't matter how your picture looks. Don't, don't worry about that part. You're just trying to represent what you're doing. So to do my two and a half, I've got my two and my half. 
And to do my one and seven eighths, this is one. And then that part represents the seven eighths. So then again, you're you're doing kind of like you have with that box method. You gotta you gotta know these uh, how to multiply these to find the answers. So two times one we know is two. Then you would be saying a half times one. So one times a half is still gonna be that half. So then you're gonna multiply two times seven eighths. You can show that right here, two times seven eighths. Remember we can always stick a one under it. That's gonna be 14 eighths. And then a half times seven eighths, write it right here. One times seven is seven, two times eight is 16. Sometimes you're gonna see it shown this way, so we need to know how to represent that. Um, what equations model the areas? You're just doing that same thing. One times two is two. One times a half is a half. Uh, two times seven eighths is 14 eighths. And a half times seven eighths is seven sixteenths. And how can you use the areas of all four of those? You could add them, just like we do. So you could um, try to find some spot right here. Two plus one half plus 14 eighths plus seven sixteenths. So we've got three different fractions, but I know their common denominator could be 16. 8 times 2 is 16, 14 times 2 is 28, and I know 1 half is equivalent to 8 sixteenths. And you have all sixteenths, you can add them together, 28, 8, 7, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, that'd be 43 sixteenths. So then... That's improper, so we're going to figure out how many times 16 can go into 43. I know 16 times 2 is 32. 16 times 3 is 48. That's too big, so it goes near two times. I'm running out of space over here. 43 minus 32 is 11. 2 and 11. 16th, but don't forget that you had this other whole number, so it's going to be 4 and 11 sixteenths. This is a lot of work to find this answer. This might make more sense to you though, and if it does, that's great. We do need to know how to do this. Um, this can get really complicated I think so I prefer to do it the way we've done it on the other pages but um, you're going to see things like this and you're going to have to know what it is they need you to do to solve it in this kind of way so um, make sure you're familiar with it but don't feel like this is the way you have to solve it if it doesn't uh, make sense to you all right so work on that homework page 83 do those odd numbers it says um, draw an area model for them. Like I said, if you don't want to do it that way, that's okay. Um, we can, let's see, we can um, make these into improper fractions like we were there. So I'm going to give you an example right here. You can draw this model. Or remember when we multiply fractions, we can multiply our numerator times our denominator. We, um, we'll talk more about this in tomorrow's lesson. But if we make these into improper fractions, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7 thirds. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7 halves. We'll get 49 six, and that could be, that is your answer for for this. We don't want to just say 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 2 is 6 because this number, and like I said we'll talk more about this tomorrow, this is split into thirds, this is split into halves. 
So we can't, just like adding and subtracting, these aren't the same things. So we need to make them improper so we can multiply them this way. Because this two doesn't really, this is in thirds, this three is in halves. So if we'll go ahead and make them improper, they're kind of stuck in there with it instead of being a whole separate whole number. Because this two is represented in thirds, this three is represented in halves. All right, so we can just solve these like this for that homework tonight. And like I said, we're gonna keep talking about this tomorrow, multiplying mixed numbers. <laughs>